So welcome back, ladies and gents. And of course, we are now so close to getting started into game two here. We know the map is going to be dust two. I'm so excited to see that one go down. And I'm joined by Moses. How are you feeling about this game? I'm, uh, you know, I don't think this really plays in the favor of Cloud9. Really? I mean, okay. Yeah, well, because this is a map that they were really, really good on when they first started peaking. Right. And I think that teams have kind of really started exploiting a weakness they have in the middle portion of this map. Their defense on this map is very static. It's very mm -hmm. unchanging. Uh, the big issue is they, they have Skadoodle, who's, you know, one of their strongest players. He anchors down the A bomb site with that AWP. Right. But that leaves the mid open. He's not mobile. So if he has success and it pushes him away towards A, that goes towards the weak part of their defense anyway. So they need to find some way to, to really strengthen mid and B. OK, so a couple of options there that they need to keep their eyes on. And I think we can all say on paper, this should be Cloud9's game. But as yes. you said, this is the chance that maybe NIP can work with considering the map choice. Right, and despite NIP's struggles, I mean, Anders even mentioned it, that these players are just so talented. And if, if they just let loose, uh, this is a map that lends itself very much to that kind of a play style. I was about to say, surely Dust 2 of all maps is the one that, you know, that puggy style can really find its place on. And which players for NIP have that opportunity to really come up big? I think Get Right was spotted out recently, standing in for Kingwin, and he just went off Oh, yeah, he was game. nuts in that match. That was insane. But uh, you got to look at, I mean, Alu with the AWP, if he gets that going, Forrest, who loves these aim duels, um, he's going to have a lot of places that he'll like to work with. And then that opens things up for Get Right, just do whatever he wants, that, that massive game sense, all those lurks he can do. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities for NIP. It's just that question that we've always had, are there players going to actually step up and perform? Because it's been so long since we've seen it. Well, it's the big question, isn't it? And it's, it's such an imperative you know, time to do it right about now. So let's hope for their sake they can find a little bit of that, oh, I hate saying it, but a little bit of nip magic the, as the it's been magic. coined right now. Um, but you know, they've got Heaton back with them, so maybe they can rekindle a little bit of that romance there. But you know, in the, pay, in the place of Nartu, maybe not the same role coming in there, of course. But still, it's a lot of factors coming in for Nip, but maybe could lend themselves in this instance on this map. But it's still going to be a factor as we come into this one. But on paper, you're saying this should be Cloud9's victory. Should be, but should be. it's worrisome because Cloud9's looked a little, I mean, a little bit weaker recently as well. I mean, mm -hmm. going back to, to Cologne, they, they bombed out. I mean, that's a result that no one expected. Uh, and it was on this map that they got you know, you can say, quote, upset by Kingwin. I know those players will take a little bit of umbrage to that, but... <laughs> I did see that recently, yeah. Whatever you want to call it, I mean, that's a match. Once again, that was another match where we just felt Cloud9 shouldn't lose that, and they did. Well, let's see if they can keep it together. It's going to be the knife round coming up to start us off with. And they're famously saying they do enjoy starting on their T-sides occasionally if they want to warm up into this, but we'll see if they opt for that, if they do pick up the knife here. But side choice-wise, any anything defining about it, or is it just going to be up in the air? It's going to be up in the air. <laughs> well, it's all going to be, a lot of it will come down towards those ops, Skadoodle and Alu. I mean, two really, really good offers, two offers who have the potential to make those huge plays, but are very, very good at just sitting back and, you know, getting their kills and holding their spot with the ops. Yeah. So we'll have to see how that goes. Get right falls in the end, almost makes it a comeback. Almost. So Cloud9 will get to pick whichever side they want to start on, and they are going to be staying, it looks like. Uh, Sean Garris picking to maybe start out on the T side there. So something you expected or something that maybe they're looking to build in towards? Didn't expect it, but it's not surprising because, like I said, CT, their CT defense on this map is sometimes a struggle. So they want to start out on their side where they feel like they can put up the most rounds, get off to a hot start, uh, and go from there and transition into their you know weaker side after that. All right, so we're going to have to keep our eyes on this one. Just a couple of seconds until we get underway. Cloud9 <clears throat> opting for that T side start. NIP going to be forced on towards CT, but I'm sure they're just as fine with that. It's not such a huge thing these days. We know they can turn this sort of stuff around. But as you said, Skadoodle going to be an outstanding factor here. And I can imagine that Skadoodle more favorably up against Alu. Alu's been a little bit quiet recently, not seen those big games out of him just yet. But there's still time, and this would be the perfect opportunity. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, he comes into a team that right when he joins, they're kind of heading into the slump. And so everyone's playing a little bit poorly. And we've seen at times the flashes of Alu carrying them through stretches of the match. But they're going to need more of that. They're going to need him uh, to be able to outduel Skadoodle at times. Uh, certainly going to be a tough task, and the countdown has started, ladies and gents. We're going to be getting this one started very quickly. NIP up against Cloud9 here. Best of one is down Dust2. Cloud9 starting on that T side, NIP on the CT side. And this means a hell of a lot to the teams. They want to avoid going down early on. They do not want to have to play that best of three. If they can avoid that, then they're in a little bit of a better stead. Well, yeah, no one wants to play Envy. No one wants to Correct. play Envy in an elimination. Well, you do, because uh, it means you move on. But that's going to be the scary. It's all fast for either one of these teams. Yeah, no one would want to face those guys when they find their form. Certainly was missing a little bit previously. But we are live into this one. And we'll get this one started up nice and quickly. But looking at the T side, we do have that utility towards nothing. And Sean Garris, the rest, hitting up on the armor. Where are they looking towards going? 
Well, nothing with the bomb is heading in towards B tunnels. That's a little bit dangerous. He's all alone. This is going to be a mid B split. They've walked out mid forces, spotting it from the dust two or the B bomb site window. Let's see what he can do here. Well, the man who's renowned for that pistol work, not really having the chance. He gets put down swiftly. And look at this play from Cloud9, just bullying their way in towards that B side. Bombs on the way there. Nothing was a little vulnerable if they maybe pushed out earlier, but no. He gets in safe. You're seeing Get Right and Alu, the last two standing, trying to make something out of this. That P250 in the hands of Shroud is going to just shred Alu down, and it's Get Right, last man standing. Yeah, really bad start for NIP, no real defense mounted there at Cloud9, just a typical mid beast, but they walk out mid, they don't smoke it early, they wait till they're out so they can, you know, they, they delay rotations, and then they just explode. Brilliantly done. Get right, trying to find anyone in this instance. Shroud's a little low, but he's already backed away, and it'll be Skadoodle to close it down. That's Cloud9 picking up round one. Not too surprising, but nicely done. They didn't suffer a single casualty in that factor, and it just seemed like it went perfectly for them. Yeah, well, we talk about perfect. Freakazoid, that entry fragger gets that opening kill onto Forrest. Like you said, Forrest renowned for his pistol work. Not able to find anything. And we do see a little bit of a buy-up out of NIP. Three members with armor. All of them have upgraded pistols, although Alu not buying armor. That's the offer, so they want to make sure he has that gun into the fourth round. And there's a good trade. Nade from Forrest cleans up Shroud. Yeah, great little start there. Can't retrieve anything from it, of course. Down by those double doors. Alu's still spamming away with the P250, keeping them back, buying a little time here. And maybe Alu going to try and pick up something for himself there off the fallen corpse of his teammate. Nothing to be found, however. And look at the T side. They don't seem too threatened. They, they seem to be just kind of re uh, you know, keeping their options open. But nothing. Once again, taking his time by those B tunnels. But it looks like they're maybe considering that mid again. But this time, he's not split towards B on his own. Yeah, there's, this is the same thing as the Pisteron. Just walk out, get that smoke out late. Now it's been spotted. There's a crossfire set up in the B bomb site. Freiburg's got to go huge. He has to land one of these, and that's not going to happen. Sean Garris just moves in, takes them down. That's two back to back. Now, Forrest and Alu, last two men standing a mile away from the others, and there's so little they can achieve here. Yeah, there's really nothing. Uh, the, the most they can do is maybe push out. There is a MAC 10 on Forrest, but they, they can push out long and try and find an exit over towards uh, T spawn. But really nothing open to them. They're just going to save this armor, save this MAC 10, a little bit of utility that they have. But that's Cloud9 on that Ecoron. That's probably one of the very few second rounds on Dust2 they haven't had to go up against a scout. So you saw it. They were a little bit patient early on trying to figure out where that gun was at, and it just never showed. So just bullying their way into that B bomb site works one more time. Yep, maintaining the rifles as well. You got the Galil in there. You got Freakside with the AK. Everyone's pretty much golden from this. And there we go. Only Shroud going down in those first two rounds. Cloud9 looking very comfortable to start off with. We've not seen much back from NIP, but I'm waiting to see what they can bring later into this one once they get those guns beside them. Because this round's probably going to be no better for them, if we're honest. Yeah, more than likely not. That P250 on Forest is dropped over to get right. Forest keeps the MAC 10. So they do have. A little bit of upgraded firepower. Skidoodle not even really taking a shot. It was very delayed, waiting to see how many cross. And Alu gets naded very early on, down to 34, but it's fast working up catwalk, and there's no defense here. There's not even a person in the A bomb site. There's Alu finally getting cleaned out by a third nade. Yeah, this just looks like rinse and almost repeat for Cloud9, just bullying their way towards the side. So confident about it as well, not messing around here. Sean Garris just checking down by Goose. No one to be found. As you noted, everyone's kind of away from the side. They're looking to retake through mid there. Three players for Nip, trying to make their way up towards short Skadoodle with the scout. Going to go in for one, not going to get it, but he does have backup. That Shroud and Skadoodle cleaning up the remains of Nip. Nicely done then, locking down every possible threat. And Cloud9 get those clean three to start with. Yeah, really well done by Cloud9 in those first three rounds, one kill going the way of NIP. That's Forrest picking that up, but no damage dealt. And they're a team. They're going to keep these SMGs. We've seen it in the past from them, and with them, they tend to enjoy doing really, really fast strategies. In the past, it's been a P90, but using the movement of the SMGs to enter into the bomb sites. Kadoodle's got that AWP. So does Alu. Well, this is what we wanted to see, but it, as you mentioned, quite a fast B possibly coming out here. Freiburg not breaching in towards the side. He's going to have to deal with it from afar. Great little spray through the smoke while flashed up. Catches out nothing. Flashes are slowing down the T players, so at least maybe Nip can look towards this one. Freiburg's got himself in a great spot. Singles out one. Gets him down. Forrest comes in. Finally, Nip make a stand. But there's two players left standing, though. Sean Garris and Shroud. But on the edge of the smoke, Forrest just popping up a touch. Don't think he meant that one, but the site now slowly being encroached upon by Cloud9. But NIP know what's up. They've got a good idea here. Shroud does manage to sneak through, but nicely done by Nip, slowing them down on that entrance then. Yeah, that's the thing with those SMGs, trying to make it fast. That first kill by Freiburg was, was the key. He times it. He gets a little bit fortunate with the time. He doesn't get flashed by, by just that just that timing. He finds the gap before he gets blinded, gets the first kill, and that slows everyone down because the support flashes from his teammate blind all of Cloud9 in the tunnels. They can't make it out. That buys time for the rotations. Good start here for NIP, at least with guns in their hands. 
the other side of things, though, Cloud9 just hopping back in towards those rifles, of course, as you mentioned, you know, just those SMGs before, so they can maybe go for a little bit. Sean Garris sticking down with the Tech 9. You get right. Playing on short, maybe going to fall back a touch with the P90 there. Yeah, Sean will have to the AWP and just taking the uh, Tech 9 for himself. Has a good in game leadership. Good guy. What a nice guy. Anyway, Cloud9 taking their time on this. Playing a little slower, of course. You've got to be a touch more tentative on this. Maybe get some of that utility away from the CT side and get right now. Just lurking ahead. Brilliant play from Get Right to go down. Just walking in with the P90 and saying no by those double doors at long. And now three left standing for the T side. And, you know. It may not be pretty, it may not be nice, but it's working out. Get right, goes for the spray, but Sean Garris finds him. And there's Skadoodle taking Exist down in mid. And we're back down to a 3v3. And Skadoodle knows the boost. He saw, he saw where he gets that kill from. He knows there's one more player close up. That's Freiburg, so he's just holding it for the fallback. That flash works perfectly, and Freiburg actually swings over and peeks, but decides to fall back in towards CT spawn. It's going to be all up to this duel. Nothing versus Forrest. Who's going to win this one? Doors are getting smoked off now. Right, Forrest knows there's someone there. Nothing gonna have to breach in towards this flash. Comes out, Forrest isn't flash, but hopping up on the bucks. Nothing just about gets away with it for a second, but no. Forrest closes down, Freiburg comes in. Now Skadoodle, 1v3. He's got a lot of work to do, and the bomb's there in B. They know where it is, and Alu comes around the back. Great little shutdown from Nip. And this is just good play coming out from NIP now. Yeah, once again, back into the B bomb site. This time it's Forrest that gets that initial kill, and buys time for Freiburg to, to rotate back and support him wonderfully. So. Another good round for NIP, two in a row on the gun rounds. Get right picks up that P90 once again. All right, we're seeing the double orb coming out for NIP as well. Forrest can be opting for that. Alu joining in. And Get right just going for a walkabout, maybe just trying to find outside that money. He already takes down Freakazoid. This should be shooting fish in the barrel for that man if he carried on that journey, but backs away after one. Yeah, this is Get right just saying, I've had enough. I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to do what I want. He's, he's doing it perfectly with this P90. Aggressive towards long gets one. That time he finds the intel. And now these ops can really go to work. Well, we've seen how dangerous Get Right can get when he gets in that man mentality and already doing fairly well for himself. Of course, you know, Cloud9 only have pistols to work with, but he is really racking up the dollar bills here and nothing just about creeping past, though. It looks like he's deathmatching at the moment. It really <laughs> it's does. a scary yeah. attitude for this guy. When he gets into these kind of mindsets, you know how good he can get. All of them, really. And this is three rounds in a row now. They felt really comfortable on these gun rounds. Double op setup is so intimidating to have to go against if you're Cloud9. Skadoodle, glass cannon op. He's going to have some work to do. He's got to find a pick for his team. All right, you got Forrest to challenge down in mid. Alu's been playing down by long, so this could be the start of it. But no, Forrest doesn't land that one. Caught a glimpse, I think, of Skadoodle just hopping down. But this is a fast play through mid. Forrest is going to be overwhelmed here, but they're flashed up. He gets a second. He takes the shot. He gets it. Freakzoid goes down. And look at this. Forrest, nice little pop flash. Trying to keep control of mid. And the bomb's there as well. Yeah, that's a crucial kill. And now Cloud9 has to come towards this, but the Ops able to reposition. And he oh, finds one through the smoke. Nice shot from Forrest. Outstanding play from Forrest already, making his mark with that orb. But it is a 4v3. It's not too impossible, but that bomb is in such a bad spot here. And Cloud9 know it. Forrest is readjusting. He's trying to keep his mind open to where the others will be peeking from. He does catch a glimpse. He's down so low. He's got to be cautious. As Sean Garris does find Alu. Maybe. Cloud9 can chip their way back into this, but there's still existing. There's still Freiburg. There's so much defending that bomb. Yeah, and there's no more smoke, so it's going to be all down to these picks. Sean picks up the op. He used to do it for his team. Finds one kill. That's a good find. That's, uh, that's Forrest going down with his op. But still, not a lot of utility to use, and they've got to find something. Clock's running down. 38 seconds left. Cloud9 are going straight in for this one. NIP playing it back, playing quite calm in this, just sticking themselves on towards that B side. They know where the bomb is, and Freiburg's eyes are watching it. He's going to be... Peeking this one, he catches this one, he doesn't get the shot off, and Skadoodle finds Freiburg. The glass cannon's paying off, and now just exists standing. They've retrieved the bomb, they're getting the hell out of dodge, and that is just brilliant stuff from Cloud9. They just brute force their way back in, and Nip seemed to have no answer. Yeah, playing so passively, they couldn't trade any of these kills, and now Sean's in CT spawn, holding the angle with the AWP, but exists with some nice movement, wins that duel. Bomb is gonna get planted. Picks up the AWP to try and find one more, but Skadoodle's too quick. Three kills for him on the round, a crucial three kills as well, where they had to rely on those picks and those duels. Absolutely massive from Skadoodle, even in those tough situations, as you said, when they're playing so passively, Nip are just tucking themselves in towards the sides, anywhere they could get away from it, but still. Cloud9 forged their way through, it's 4-3 now, NIP still able to get back on the buy though, double or back into place. Forrest had an outstanding beginning with it last time, and with a Skadoodle this time, eyes are peeled, he's keeping eyes on this, and look at this play, he's, he was already peeking towards Sean, I think he knew that maybe there was going to be a play from Ali there, but they do back away. Yeah, this is a crucial round for NIP because they've invested in this double op setup a couple times now. It's really, really expensive. So losing this round, they're going to be forced onto a save afterwards. 
That's when Cloud9 can really start racking up the rounds. Alu boosted up onto a teammate's head on Catwalk, trying to peer into lower B. Not finding anything quite yet. Most of Cloud9 positioned outside of long. Much slower play coming out from Cloud9. We've seen that when they, you know, those fast Bs do work out in the early rounds, but you know, now there's that utility there with Nip. It just doesn't pay out anymore. But the rotate's coming through, and they're heading over towards that B site here. We already had, I can imagine, maybe nothing playing around those B tiles. He's been there almost every round, but now you're going to have this duel starting out again. Forest up against Skadoodle last time. Skadoodle won this one. Forest. Looking for a chance here, he's holding the perfect angle and he gets it. That's gonna slow things down, but no, they don't. They keep running into him and there we go. This is surely gonna be his triple. He does get it, nothing goes down. And Forrest just coming into his own here. Perfect play with the orb. Sean Garris, last man standing, gonna get picked up by Exist. And that is the beauty of what can happen when Forrest starts firing on all cylinders. Yeah, well, Forrest reads that perfectly. He was positioned in the middle with that AWP and at a certain point where they see nothing across the map, he rotates into the B bomb site, grabs the angle, and it's just cleanup duty for him. And that's an interesting call from Cloud9, who put pressure nowhere on the map and then make the call full rotation back to B without the intel. And they're forced onto a save of their own. All right, so let's kind of take stock. As this is a save coming out from Cloud9, they shouldn't be able to achieve too much with it. I have to wait and see. But coming out from you know what we're seeing from these two teams form-wise, is this NIP looking dangerous? Is this the normal NIP? What are we seeing here? Because at least I know, you know Forrest is having a great game. Get right look confident at the start. This looks quite, quite a dangerous side so far. Yeah, uh, and Anders mentioned it on the uh, analysis desk, is that, yeah, get right, just trying to do more of his death matching thing. He gets punished that time by nothing. And just all out aggression from NIP, they Forrest don't care. Or running up mid right now with his USPS. This guy's just, they, they're playing DM, and it's working. They're just playing this crazy aggression style. It's amazing to watch, but nothing did recover the M4, but no armor to help him out there, at least head armor, and he goes down. Yeah, and I was gonna say, Anders mentioned it, that NIP at times, we've seen them in, the, in recent, during this slump, they just play like they're not confident. And this time, now that you know they've gotten into this, they've won five gun rounds, and Cloud9's only won one, so now, NIP starting to feel that confidence just based off the fact that they're winning a lot of these duels. They're taking good fights, and they're coming out on top, and that's just going to continue. It's good. There's a great little spawn for Long that. Going to try and make the peak. No one's going to be challenged, though. There's actually no one playing down towards Long this time for NIP. They're, they're playing so stacked towards that mid to be. Get right and Forrest are playing off that one. And here we go. Exist is going to be where the buck stops. He does get the spray down towards one, but there we go. The exchange comes in. Cloud9 start taking some control of this map, and Nip need to respond to it. Yeah, but no aggression up long A. It's just going to leave Skadoodle there. Get right swings out. He's very lucky to get away with that one. Even Alu goes for a second peek, but they're going to have to boost back up into the site if they want that. And the fact that Skadoodle holds long A for his team pretty much moves Cloud9. That's their best option because they, they dedicated so much. They didn't have really too much map control elsewhere, so they come back towards long, and they're going to have to work their way up to the site. No one from Nips over responding to this. They're just still taking the time around mid. You've got Get Right on shore. There's no one on that site. It just was the only player by A at the beginning. And look at them, they already know what's going on here. Freiburg making his way up mid, he's going to get so much information off this, and Cloud9's game is going to be certainly unraveled here, but they will at least get the bomb down, I can imagine, fairly unscathed. Yeah, well, the fact that there's no defense here, they, they've got to know that a flank at long is coming very, very quickly, and Skadoodle's positioned himself in pit to watch that, but get right, just holding catwalk, so now they know exactly Cloud9 can only be long and in the A bomb site. That makes this retake much easier, and Freiburg wins the battle against Skadoodle. Now this is looking scary for Cloud9. That was massive, here we go. Can they unlock the rest? It's Freiburg coming in again on long. He's gonna find nothing. Now there's two players standing on the bomb site. Shroud, the last man alive. Forrest found Sean Garris. He's gonna put out whatever he has here. Tries to slow them down by platform, takes the peak. He takes down Get Right. He looks for the fourth. He's running out of time, but so is the CT side. He goes for the clock. He's trying to get it out. Shroud comes in with it. In the end, four kills for that man. It took him to pick up four, but they make it work. What a beautiful play from Shroud. All he could really do is get aggressive and find that one-on-one. -on -one. If he stays in that corner, he's going to get sandwiched. He's going to get pinched. So he gets aggressive, finds one, and then just jumping around, <laughs> stays alive as long as possible, playing that bomb timer like it's a teammate. Perfect. Perfectly done then. A little scary, let's yeah, say, but in scary. that situation, he pulled off what he needs to do. Now, looking at NIP, they're not great for money in this one. You've got Get Right with the Mag 7. You've got Freiburg a little less than comfortable, but Cloud 9's still taking the time. They don't want to rush this, it seems, and Forrest backing out of mid and looking at Cloud 9. Once again, Sean Garris just down to that Tech 9. No ought to be seen. This almost looks like their pissed around. Like what they did at the beginning of this half was just walk out mid and then delay smoke CT spawn. Could Four players it. grouped up there now, but Get Right blocks that avenue off for the moment. Nice little insight there from Get Right, but doesn't matter. It looks like Cloud9 are 
keeping their options open. There we go. Freiburg gets a brilliant touch of information. Flash is going to be exchanged, but he does manage to catch out one. Doesn't matter. Freaksoid opens up on the B site. Now Forrest has to hold on once again. Single-handedly does finally go down. Freaksoid doing wonderfully for Cloud9 there. And now the last two are cut off from the others. Get right and Alu. Probably not going to have a shine test, but look at nothing. Already hunting them down. Yeah, interesting to see nothing in that lurk position. He delays it. Alu's got to go take care of him. And now with the time running down, no kits on Alu or Get Right. There is one in the bomb site. Forrest had one, but they'd have to retake it to pick that kit up. And it just seems too tall of a task for him. So they're going to save. Get Right's going to try and pick one off, trying to chase Alu. But in reality, the economy for Cloud9 is not good enough for them to chase these down. They have to save these weapons that they have. Yeah, it's. It was a shoddy purchase to begin with. It wasn't perfect from them either. Obviously, the Tech 9 still being present on Sean Garris, but they do manage to walk away at least with an AWP as well. So that's going to be Skadoodles to hold on to into the next round. And you're going to have everyone surviving from this. So at least Cloud9 getting this one back in towards their favor. They're starting to build up maybe a little bit more of that scoreline, but still, 6 5 is a respectful CT side for an IP. We know that they're maybe not always favorable towards the CT side. They like to start on the T side on occasion, but overall, performance wise, who's impressed you most thus far? Just watching it, well, Forrest with his op has had a couple good rounds. Even some of the rounds they've lost, he's had some good shots of it. But get right with the aggression that he's displayed, he needs to start having a little bit more of an impact. It seems like Cloud9 recognizes that he was catching fire and have gone away from him the past few rounds. Oh, Alu's the one with the M4 here. Going to be swept aside again. Freak has always been starting to come into his own in the last couple of rounds. That play towards B was something that he certainly forged together. But Exist waiting up on shore will take him down. So that's an element removed. And they will at least be able to recover some form of weaponry. I think that's off Alu. Yeah, and this stack at the A bomb site for NIP hasn't been found out. Freakazoid did not get the information of catwalks, and now they're going to cross anyways. There are three NIP members here. Forrest has the M4, but being smoked off, he can't connect with the spray through. And there's nothing taken out exist. Opens the bomb site up a little bit more, but Freiburg goes for the jump. I always get nervous seeing this one, but Freiburg not going to quite have the moment we saw Shroud have earlier on. But Gerai shows him how it's done. That's two back to back. The Mag 7 coming in. I think he looked a little astounded with those two landing. But now Freiburg is in this. I think they know where the bomb went down. I'm pretty sure they saw it on the side. At least get right, might have. But ooh, catching Skadoodle down to 10 HP. Perfect start for Freiburg in this 1v2. But can he define any of these situations? Goes for the hop up. Not going to get it. They planted safe for it. Skadoodle already in pit. Freiburg looking for his chance here. He's getting tagged up. He has no armor to work with either. It's a little scary for Cloud9, though. That plant is not for the upper in pit. So Skadoodle's got to hit the shot as he's crossing. But he's missed a couple. Freiburg. Trying to find a pick before he really commits to it, and it's not happening. He might just want to think about running away at this point. Yeah, he's running out of ammo. He's running out of time. He's going to make his mind up, and it is time to seemingly back away for now. Trying to go for the safe cross away, but no. Sean Garris will find him on the way out. And even though he got a little shaky at the end there, Cloud9 do pick up the round. Yeah, but they, they lose three. And it was, uh, there was still that Max 7 and that M4 that were saved, so it wasn't too much of an investment for NIP. But there's that off. Back into Alu's hands. Forrest not able to afford one. They've, been, they've desired this double op setup through the opening portion of this half, but they're not able to go back to it quite yet. This time, light utility, no kits on the NIP side. Yeah, and it looks like a scorching star for the T side. That's going straight in towards long. But look at Forrest. He's round the back of two of them here. Shroud's already gone past. He's going to find exist. The wild spray comes in. But no, nothing just denies that play coming out from Forrest. He had the opportunity, but just didn't work out in his favor. And now 4v3, the CT side at the disadvantage is Sean Garris starting to keep his eyes towards those mid doors. We know Get Right's been playing there, but not going to show his presence. And Cloud9 slowed down. Yeah, and this is what Cloud9's transitioned into. They were taking this delayed long control, and they're just holding it for some time. They have the kills. They know they can spread the defense out a little bit if they wait patiently, because at some point, NIP's going to have to have the intel. They're going to have to know what's coming so they can rotate to really make up for that man deficit. And Alu's the one tucked into the side of the room, and just head down, trying to hide the the orb from being seen, and all of NIP making Cloud9 make the move. That Molotov is going to force Alu out of the site as Freaksoid will do what he does best, just cracking open these bomb sites. He's playing that role so well so far. But Freiburg and Get Right, so far away from being able to get in towards this one, but Get Right's having a little look towards mid, maybe looking to take some guns away, maybe looking to do some sort of damage, but just seems almost impossible at this point. Here we go, Get Right. Oh. Oh. Do it. Do it. Come on, Get Oh. At all right, there's one. He knows where the second is. He should get that, and he does. Nicely done by Gerai, but the time's certainly not in their favor. And you can see the man's kind of lurking prowess. Always going to be so class. He wanted that knife. He did. So badly. He went for it. He, he, he looked for it.
He was almost there. Not going to happen, though. 2v2, and it will be NIP to at least retain these weapons. No one's even close from Cloud9. They're going to tuck themselves away in pit. They need to keep those as well to hand. Maybe Skadoodle can get himself an orb to uh, be playing with. Excuse me, he's already got one. Tell a lie. So, all good on the uh, Cloud9 front, pretty much. They're not the cleanest of rounds, but they're getting them in the bag. Right, and, and they've had four straight. So, now at a point where there's a couple rifles saved up on NIP, but... This buys a little bit of armor, upgrades the pistol, so this is mostly a save out of NIP with three players not purchasing anything, and they're just going to see what Freiburg can get right can get done, but once again, so aggressive up Catwalk, that's Shroud. He's, always, he's already making his way up the stairs. There's two players at long trying to cross. Might have been able to catch him out, but he's going to wait for them to rotate back in. Yeah, one player made it towards Goose, but there's the molly coming in towards Sight. Not going to flash anyone out this time. But Ali's already starting to surge up by Long. They're going to start knowing. These guys, they're, they're not playing towards Long at the moment. They're not here. They've got to be somewhere else. And Freiburg's the one with the gun. That's the big factor here. Exists just away from the flames. This is going to be huge. Can Freiburg do any damage with this M4? He needs to make it count. It was one of the two weapons retained on the NIP side. Here we go. Does connect towards Sean Garris. But sadly for Exist, he can't make the damage be done. And Cloud9 once again starting to take the side. But... Freiburg starting to look. He's going to have the chance. He gets the tag, not the frag. And once again, everyone showing their presence. He's going to take the player down on the side. That took a little bit longer than expected, but still, they've got a chance into this. Three players make it two. Freiburg, look at this man go. That's incredible play from him. Four already, single-handedly taking down Cloud9. Won't get the ace, but it will be closed down by Alu. And that defuse should be coming in any second now once that molly goes away. Yeah, that's a massive mistake from, from Cloud9. Letting Freiburg come up like that. They couldn't connect the shots. Skadoodle on Catwalk, that should have been his kill. One player over towards that quad box. He couldn't find it either, so Freiburg just strolls his way up and kills Freakazoid as soon as he's done planning. That's got to be frustrating for him to have two of his teammates fail to cover him in that situation, but a beast round from Freiburg. Really well done. Yeah, nice play from him, but 6-8 scoreline-wise, this is a very close game. This is substantially closer than I thought it'd be, if I'm completely honest. Looks like NIP finding a little bit of form here, but we're going to see the challenge down on Long. Good doodle, not going to miss that one. Connects towards Get Right, gets out, and does the early damage. Yeah, and that kill forces two players from NIP. They just want to make sure there's not going to be an explosion coming out of that choke point from Cloud9. But either way, gap in the defense is on Catwalk, and once again, C9 making their way up. They're already peering out towards Long. That's where Alu is with the AWP, but he can't land anything. He falls quickly, and now it's just this holding himself alone. They pop flash through the smoke. Are they going to fight him? Are they going to check for it? He's hiding in the smoke, but there's Skadoodle. He turns around. Yeah, it almost happened again. The amount of times they've walked past someone just narrowly missing them, but this time they do find the threat. Forrest last time tried to make an attempt. That didn't work out either, but still. Forrest and Freiburg, the last two alive in this round, up against the four players on the T side, and they're going to have to make damn sure they don't lose this one, but Forrest does catch one going towards Goose. He knows where he is. Freiburg confidently striding towards the side as Forrest does try and keep eyes towards Goose, making sure no one can peek out. Drops down, looking towards Ramp. He's going to catch a glimpse. Freiburg's going to deal with Freak, but Skadoodle's eyes are trained on that, and they're not going to let that one go. Making up that previous round, 9-6 to six is what we're going to be looking towards. And to be fair, I've got to say it, Cloud9 started to pick up momentum towards the end, but NIP are showing that danger that we know they can occasionally display. But what are your thoughts overall as the scoreline? Are NIP safe enough going into their T-side on this? Are Cloud9 comfortable enough? Who's got the advantage in that aspect? Uh, I wouldn't be comfortable from Cloud9, knowing the defensive struggles they've had. And if you, look at, if you look at how these rounds played out, there was a stretch where Nippo won four or five right in the center. That's when they had that double op going. Cloud9 makes an adjustment off that, wins four straight, and they win you know, four of the last five rounds, or five of the last six rounds that were played. Yeah. Uh, but either, like, that's going to be something that we're going to have to see in the second half, because if NIP notices that this mid-defense is weak at any point, and they can exploit that, we're going to have to see an adjustment out of Cloud9, and it's an adjustment they've failed to make time and time again on this map, most notably against Kingwin in the group stages of ESL Cologne, and also uh, the Pro League Finals, uh, just uh, in the first season against, against Fnatic in the Grand Finals. Weakness of plenty, the raid bust of Forrest. Gonna let his presence be known by long there as Shroud's gonna have to back the hell away, get boosted up towards the side. But we are live into the second half now. NIP up on the T side, Cloud9 on the CT side, Shroud trying to make an attempt here with Skadoodle, but Freiburg just puts him to bed, but Skadoodle with a precise two kills coming in, just plucking the heads off Exist and Forest. That's a big threat down. Alu's gonna pick up the Tech 9 at least, but the bomb's not yet crossed. They've left it behind on long. He's gonna have to go back for it. Get right and Freiburg finally get the kills. Alu chimes in with one. And slow but surely, Cloud9 let that one slip. They had the opportunity then. Yeah, Get Right plays a really important role in that round lurking out mid because Sean could have helped guard the cross. They, they didn't get the bomb. It was dropped and the smoke fades away. And now Sean just in this one on three. He's being held perfectly by Get Right. 
you can see with only 5 HP, Gero doesn't even have to land the shots. He's just got to keep the attention, and Sean knows he's got to come back for him, and he gets dropped. So, nice little start there for an IP. Picking up round one in the second half. Going to be pretty gutting, I can imagine, for Cloud9, considering you said such an important factor is going to be that play towards mid, keeping that under wraps, and when Gerrite can play that role throughout that, it's never going to feel good. So, looking on towards the T side, we're going to see the scout coming out. A couple of SMGs, a rifle on towards Freiburg. And no surprise that Gerrite's gone for that P90. But on the other side of things, they've got a little bit to work with. Not a great deal, though. And it looks like a brute force towards B. And that P90 is going to have a whale of a time until it met Sean Garris, who gets one, gets two, gets the third. Outstanding individual moment coming out from Sean Garris, just soloing pretty much the entire site. That was something you do not see every day. Heartbreaking from Nip to let that happen to him. Sean throws that Molotov a little late. It almost does absolutely nothing, but the 5-7 does work. Three kills. and. With the bomb down, all four members of Cloud9 inside the site, all of a sudden, this almost looks undoable for NIP. Alu's got a scout. That's not going to do too much entering into the site. He does have a Tech 9, though. That's the one that's going to have to do the damage. Yeah, quite the admirable performance already from Sean Garris into this round. I don't think he'd be expected to do much more. And with that bomb just being held in the clutches of Cloud9, NIP know their options are so, so limited here. And you can imagine Freiburg not wanting to lose out on that rifle, and look at these guys just chomping at the bit, just waiting for them to peek in. And they used all the smokes they picked up off the dead bodies to just block this choke point, so the, the clock is just continuously running down 30 seconds before they're even going to be able to make their move. Yeah, if you uh, wanted to make the situation worse, there's certainly one way. Freak Sword's going to be on the receiving end, at least one grenade coming out. Freiburg's going to get one, get two, not going to find the third, and it's Skadoodle with the shutdown on the last two players. But Cloud9... With it, it, I don't know how it seems to happen to them, but when it does, you know, it's, it's either Freakazoid coming up big with those entries that we saw towards the site, and then Sean Garris having a bit of a moment for himself then. It seems they can just pull it together in the, the smallest of instances, and now NIP are down to these Tech Nines. They've got a lot to work with, though. Well, it's usually Cloud9 where those rounds, those force buys out of their opponents, usually terrorizes them. They don't go their way. They're the ones you, you think just that match of the head and Envy earlier today. Yeah. You know, they lost that eco to NBK at the ace, but those are the matches that usually ruin the day for them. This is not going too perfectly either for NIP looking at this one. Alu taking all damage exists, and there we go. Finally, the kills are going to come back in towards it. Nothing just going to stamp his authority towards short, stop them making their way through, as now just exists left alive. But they did lose out on two players there. Yeah, that looked a little bit scary for just a second. Those two kills from nothing really swing it back into Cloud9's favor, but there was an opportunity there for NIP to start swinging wide and at least get a bomb plant. Either way, this doesn't look like it's going to go their way. Exist does have the bomb. He could get a plant. He doesn't know this quite yet, but there's no one near the A-bomb so They're actually going to give him the plant, and they're just going to play it for the retake. Wow. Surprised they actually gave him that, but I guess maybe playing for the safer retake than the challenge. Well, they know. They also know that next round's going to be a save out of NIP no matter what. The bomb just gives them a better buy in the following round when they can get those AK-47s. And there we go. Nicely closed down by Short Garris in the end, and the defuse will be sure to follow afterwards. But... So far, NIP not really had much of an opportunity to show too much, aside from obviously that second round buy-in with you know, the scouts and the one rifle on Freiburg, really. But we'll be seeing the defuse come through. Cloud9 making it 11-7, to 7, something more of a scoreline I expected to see probably earlier on almost in their favor. Right, but now they've got to close out, because that's the, that's the task. That's the next thing that Cloud9 has struggled with in the past. Even when they peaked and had those three semifinal appearances, they really had trouble closing things out when they had the lead. It's all going to come down. This next, this next gun round is going to be so crucial at you know what should be 12 to 7 for Cloud9. It should be. There's so little on NIP that they really shouldn't be able to even make much of this one. But it's going to be maybe Sean Garris on the receiving end of the vast majority of the ninjas making their way through those B tunnels. As Alu, pretty much the only one towards mid here. One player just behind him by CT. And should be an easy clean up for nothing there. Deals with Alu nicely. And there we go, Sean Garris just mowing them down with nothing helping them out. So not even losing a single player and barely even using that utility either. Yeah, he got that position and he knew it's just it's just kind of a it's free kills for him. So yeah. he just sits back there against those Glocks, against maybe a P250, not too much to do. But once again, NIP, much like their defense, they've gone back to the double op setup. Alu and Forrest both employing those, going for a mid-pick early, and they're going to find it. Skidoodle takes the duel and he gets dropped. Yeah, perfect beginning class little shot coming out from Forrest. And Considering he's glass cannon, very brave of him to go for that, but Alu gonna do it as well, just taking down nothing. That's be fairly open, he's gonna go confidently off the back of that, and look at it, Freakzone's gonna have to try and support through mid. Sean Garris will help him out, taking down Freiburg. 
they do not have control of B, but look at this. MIP aren't just flooding into this. They're taking their time, and Getright might be finding options here. Yeah, this is the smart play. This is why Getright, renowned for his game sense, once he knows the rotations have to go towards that B bomb site, he aggressively takes long for his team. So now he has complete long control. He's going to push up. He can take a fight. He can try and find something and even open even more things up. It's just Shroud on the ramp who's got to defend against this. Yeah, and well, Freakzoid's gone down as well. It's down to those last two players. As mentioned, Sean Garris won, Shroud the other, and Garrett's going to spot out one of them. That was Shroud on ramp. And then IP, just brilliant read of the game there. It was just get right rearing up. Great work from the orbs early on. And it looks a good start for them. Once they get those double orbs, it just seems to start going so much better. Right, well, also, it helps, it helps obviously, they get that pick on Skadoodle. But even the second pick from Alu, and nothing tries to push up. Once you give those double ops that much space, you know rotations are going to come in. You know information plays are going to come in. On a map like Dust2 that's so wide open, a lot of opportunities for them to find even more kills. Yeah, and it looked like maybe a little bit of presence towards B was going to be played out early on, but it's going to be Sean Garris meeting Exist, and even though Sean Garris was the one who got, I think, legged through those doors, he will be the one to take him down, so a little bit of a work considering he's down to 11 HP here, but already MIP making tracks through those double doors in mid, and I think Alu just caught a glimpse, and oh, he misses the shot! That was vital! If he'd landed that, that could have opened this round up so perfectly, but get right gonna find John Garris, and lovely bit of timing comes out, allowing Freakzoid to peek down towards Alu and regain some control of mid. Yeah, Freakzoid loves that spot behind that box on the right side of CT spawn. That's how Kingwin kind of won their match against them, because they'd done their research. They knew that he's going to be playing there more often than not when he's rotating to help mid. And they just mollied him out. But either way, nice entrance through the smoke, get right onto nothing. And there's Freakazoid finding one more, three on two now. His flashes have been absolutely crisp so far. He's going to be able to challenge down one, but no, Freiburg snuck himself in towards safety by platform. And now 2v2, the bomb is in hand. That's going to be taken across by Freiburg, but... Forest is pretty darn low. He does have the AWP, so I guess he can still make work of this one, but Shroud going to be going aggressively through those tunnels. Freiburg's going to take down Forest. What on earth was that? A Shroud will be allowed to get the cleanup, and Cloud9 going to have a very easy retake then. Yeah, that, that's unfortunate. They got, they got a little bit confused, I'm assuming, with the flashbang coming yeah. over. He gets a little bit half blind, and he knows they're going to try and storm through that smoke at doors, so he sees Forest and just takes him out for, uh, for Cloud9. So, nice assist. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be thanking him for that one. So, yeah. All right, nice one, buddy. That's, that's really kind of you. Anyway, 13 to 8, NIP. Going to be a little, little worse for wear money wise, but they've got enough to make something out of this round. Skadoodle once again for the early start, looking for the pick, but not going to find much this time. Gets a little information, though. But the flashes are coming in thick and fast. Alu on long going to be trying to catch something out on the edge of that smoke, but no one's there. Right, but he's forced them back so fast. None of them are in the site. They're all on the ramp, and three of them actually. And they're going to be blind. And now with NIP is streaming out all oh, those flashbangs, stop them. That was, that was really scary if NIP was able to get out, but the flashbangs from Cloud9 force him back, and now Shroud has time to look towards long. NIP has to fall back and reassess. It looked like NIP wanted to go, you know, kind of fast into this, try and make their presence known early, get the early damage done, but as you noted, those counter flashes coming in towards short just completely slowed them down, completely held them up. But NIP still have that bomb going in towards the A site. They've got it down, and Exist is the one on the precipice of something huge here. Player to the right, oh, he's going to get tagged up. That's Skadoodle just letting the shots fly. Exist not to be flinching, and there we go. Exist will put down Skadoodle. He knows there's another. That's Sean Garris, but he can't run, he can't hide. The Molly's behind him. But while this happened, Freiburg did find Shroud, but Exist can't control long any longer. That's going to be going down. That's short, excuse me, as Freiburg will get down long, and Sean Garris on shore will get found. And somehow, NIP, even though they're getting challenged constantly in that, they just came on top. Right, they had great positioning for that retake to occur in Cloud9. They did something smart. As soon as, as, soon as they knew they had kind of lost that A-bomb site, they sent three to retake mid uh, to try and get up Catwalk quickly to try and get up long and flank and, and find a way to retake an avenue into that bomb site. But this playing behind the smoke plays it perfectly, just bides time, even gets one kill. Really well done from NIP on that retake defense. You see a hell of a lot of presence towards long coming out from Cloud9. They do only have pistols, though, so it's you know, far from ideal them to try and get anything done. And it looks like NIP are just going to be backing away from that, taking their time, trying to get the information. Alu's going to have a free walkabout on short. And only one player making himself tuck away in towards Goose. So really for Cloud9 here, what, what is the best they could achieve out of this? Surely NIP are not going to give this one up. So maybe just get a couple of guns away? Yeah, their money, the, the money for NIP isn't that strong. Three players on $50. If they can get two or three kills in this round, that'd be huge. And it looks pretty good that they'd be able to do that. It is going to be an executor that A-bomb said they do. Molotov off the bomb, so that forces Freakazoid in the open. That's crucial, but they might have sensed this stack now, but they're going to go anyways. Right, here we go. Forrest will connect towards Freak. He's going to be taken down pretty easily as Forrest will find Skadoodle, but look at Shroud. He's still going to be waiting ever so patiently here, but they do check it. Alu does get time to turn back around, take him down, and NIP keep the clean slate there. Five players alive and not losing anyone against Cloud9.
Now, this is a scary situation for Cloud9. If they force by here, that's a really dangerous call. It'll be interesting to see what they decide to do. Because they want, they should, in my opinion, they save here, and they are going to, so they're not going to force, but we've seen them do it in the past where they've get caught in this trend where they force by, not able to get an op in Skadoodle's hands, but they're going to let NIP get up towards 11 and just play for the gun rounds with full utility. Probably not a bad idea by, by now, but get right. He knows what's up. He's just going to be super confident. Going to find nothing, just chilling out by CT. So that's going to be a nice little start for them. And that should give away the game there. They know what they're coming up against, but... Still, NIP taking the time. They, they don't like to rush us. They don't want to walk into any sort of you know, stack at this point. Well, they lost that second round. So they don't, they don't want to do that again on an eco. Just a one, one pistol that's upgraded. We see how much damage it can do. Alu's going to find Sean over towards the window. But there's Freak swinging out, trades that kill off. But meanwhile, all of NIP has streamed out mid. Yeah, but they're going in for the challenge. That could have been dangerous there. But Freiburg will at least put the threat to bed. That's two down. Nice little bit of play from him. That really could have been dangerous because he's alone in there with the bomb. If they're able to get that down, salvage a couple of guns, and then all of a sudden NIP is in a scary spot. Could have been a lot worse, but Exist could be trying to keep guard of these weapons that have been dropped in towards the tunnels. Shroud not too far away, maybe looking to try and catch one, but not going to be an easy one with two NIP players waiting up there. Let's see what he can get. Nothing. Get right, we'll find him tucked away in the corner. And NIP starting to come in there a little bit on this T side, starting to get some momentum building. Yeah, not only building momentum, but building money. They, they have players who can rebuy multiple times, so they're, they're looking good economically going forward, but this is where Cloud9 really has to make a stand. It's been three straight for NIP. And finally now they have the AWP in Skadoodle's hands. They have really good utilities on the remaining four players. Two kits, Skadoodle and nothing with those. All right, so they have everything they need to make this round work. But once again, look at Getray, right, just straight through mid. He's so confident no one's really going to be taking him down. He got a touch of a challenge, but it's just sheer and utter confidence from this guy. It's beautiful to watch, but I'm wondering if he can get anything out of it. They've already got mid control for free almost here. Yeah, this is that weakness in the Cloud9 defense. He saw, I mean, Getright just doesn't care. No one's, he just gambles it and no one's there. So now Freak has always rotated back, but it's a little late. He's going to get smoked off. Nothing's alone outside B. He's got to do huge work. Oh, he's going to start it off perfectly. Look at that double coming in back to back. Going to deny the easy presence from NIP. Trying to swing out and make that peak alley there. Going to be the first to fall. But still, Sean Garris expecting the play through those B tunnels. Going to spray in, put the smoke down, and kind of keep the ninjas on their toes. Yeah, well, now it's all on Force. Three on five. Force has got to find some picks for his team. He's got to find a way to open things up. He's going to go up Catwalk, and he's going to run into the Skadoodle with that off. That would be a huge find. That would open up the A-bomb set, let him get a plant, and from there, they might be able to win in a retake situation. A lot to be done still, and not a great deal of time to do it. 35 seconds in this. Skadoodle's going to be flashed up, but he still finds Freiburg. Denying that easy cross towards the A site, and look at this Forest desperately trying to look for him, desperately trying to find him down by those cars, but Skadoodle already readjusting off the back of this. Bomb will be going down, safely find away from Long, but you can see this little bit of spam coming in. This Forest now looking for the challenge. Freak's so just below this. Oh my god, the damage coming through those boxes is massive. Freak's gonna find Exist, and there we go. Freak's gonna find a second. That's Forest downed, and Cloud9 gonna start building towards the end here. This is a big round for them. They needed it cleanly, they looked a little shaky when they lost control in mid, but they did somehow pull it back. Yeah, that was a great round. Nothing really wins him that round. So much space given up to NIP in middle, and nothing, not even with the help of a pop flash. He just catches Alu looking up towards the window outside of the scope, and he takes a couple players out. So leaves him in a five on three, and from there, it's just an easy cleanup. But still, they're not out of it just yet, because NIP can buy one once again. All right, once again into the flames we go. Let's see what we can find out this one. As Forrest peering towards the cross, not going to catch anyone out, though. This This... Not worked out this time. He did manage to take down Skadoodle, of course, in that brilliant exchange at the beginning. But now, two players stacked towards Long. Freak and Shroud. For now, Freak's going to back out of that one, leave Shroud. The turret there, if the NIP side do decide they want to make their presence known. But so far, where are NIP looking towards? Looking, this is going to be an A split. Bombs out towards Long. They're going to do a delayed hit here. There's only one player defending it. That's Shroud. He's going to get fully blind. He stays to throw a smoke, and he might just do it with his life, but he doesn't. He gets away, throws a pop flash. But he's got a lot of pressure coming his way. Yeah, three players about to torrent in towards him. Nades come out, 11 HP to work with. And they know he's still there. They've got to know this, and there we go. Ali will find him pretty comfortably in the end. Trout will be downed. And now Skadoodle has two angles to keep in check. He's going to find one. That's Exist being dealt with at long. But oh, great little position from Forrest. Just hopped up towards Pit. But no, Freakzoid pushed forward. But now, again, he's surrounded. Short's vulnerable. He tries to take the 1v1. Oh, he needs one shot to land. He's not going to get it. 2v2 now. He backs away. Bombs on the cross. And Cloud9 needs to play for this retake. Yeah, there was a flank coming in from Sean, but he had to be a little bit slow with it. He had an AWP, but he also knew that Getright was on Catwalk. He could have fallen back to guard those stairs. A nice nade, does good damage, jumps down. Both players on Catwalk for Cloud9. 
And both of them buy that A ramp in for NIP. They've given up complete control of that platform, allowing Freakzoid the shot, but it doesn't matter. Forrest is going to take it. Yeah, huge round for NIP there. Really well done. That looked a little bit dire early on. It took them so long to clear out Shroud because Skadoodle won, won that initial battle with the AWP, so they had to be worried that he was going to grab the angle and support him at long. Either way, it's Skadoodle and Sean with 20 kills for Cloud9. Get right leading the way with 25. Forrest behind at 21. And it's going to be a save round for Cloud9. Another round where they feasibly could have force bot, but they decide to play it safe. They're going to wait till they can get their full kits. I do start getting a little worried because, you know, we know the Cloud9 of old used to have those issues of occasionally closing out games, and they should be okay after this one, but we're going to have to wait and see if NIP can find a little bit of what's been working for them leading up to this point. It looks like Cloud9 going to try and keep that presence control towards mid, but in the moment, Forrest just looking to land that little one tap. Not going to get it easily on Shroud, though. Oh, look at Skadoodle just aggressively pushing up. He takes out Freiburg, gets traded off for his trouble, but four on four. No committal anywhere for NIP. Two players stacked up in mid, one trying to push up Catwalk. Alu gets damaged pretty heavily down to 40 HP. Yeah, this is getting dangerous. Freakazoids found exist. They're down to three players here, and let's see if anyone else can chime in from Cloud9. It looks like they're going for the challenge. It looks like Alu needs to land the shot, and he just whiffs it, and thankfully for Forrest, thankfully for him, Forrest comes in to save the day, but now, slowly but surely, Forrest is keeping this round in control. Yeah, crucially, as, as nothing and, and Sean both try and come up catwalk, but crucially, the kills that Cloud9 got, they couldn't salvage the weapon. One was in lower B, you know, one was on catwalk. Guns are too far away, so even though they get those initial kills, there's still so much firepower in NIP, and not much left for C9 players to do from there with just the pistols. But here's that buy round. Skadoodle's going to pick up the AWP. All right, this is pretty darn defining between these two. 14 to 13, Cloud9 still ahead, but for the last couple of rounds, NIP have been starting to find a little bit of fire here. Double all back out to play, a hell of a lot of utility to work with. And Skadoodle's gonna have the chance to open things up. That's Exist down. Brilliant beginning for Cloud9. And already, so much gained for so little. They, they didn't take too much damage. Shroud, I guess, and nothing were there, but again, Skadoodle, when it matters, finds form, doesn't get his third, though as Forrest will get away with his life at long. He's stuck there, but crucially, Skadoodle should, uh, he re it anyways, he should have just lived. It's all he had to do. He's very lucky that Forrest fell back off of that. Either way, five on three now. All three members of NIP stuck in mid are working their way up catwalk. It's all that's left to him because there's a flanker pushed up through B already. That's Sean Garris. He has all the intel. He knows they're going A. You can see a four-man lean for Cloud9 over towards the safe site. They're going to give it up and play for a retake, knowing they have such an advantage in terms of manpower. They should be able to just throw enough bodies at it that it should work out. We're going to find out if that's the case any second now. The bomb has been passed off towards Freiburg. Forrest will get back to watch on short. And he's going to have three players make his way there. Sean's going towards long, nothing in towards CT. First nade comes out. He's not going to find the shot there. They're starting to line up, though, and that's what Forrest wants. He's going to do it first. Freiburg comes in on the second. That's the threat from Short dealt with. And now where are the other players coming from? We've got nothing towards CT. Sean Garris on long. Shroud joining him. Three players in towards Geroy. Can he step up like Forrest has? He's going to get the first. He sprays for the second. He gets it. Geroy holding on desperately, but Shroud now has no option to, but to run. And look at Forrest going in for the hunt. He goes for the challenge. He gets denied. But there we go. It will be Freiburg to close down. And ladies and gents, we've got a game on our hands. NIP closing this, and even with Cloud with so much to work with, just couldn't make it happen. Yeah, this is this is that heartbreak with Cloud9 we see from time to time, and now they've got another decision. Do they want to let NIP get to 15 by saving and play for overtime, or do they want to go for it here? I don't like how that round was handled by Cloud9. I don't like that they gave up that bomb site so easily in a five on three. Yeah. The retake with two players coming up catwalk, they get in that battle, and there's one player coming up ramp, two more at long, but those three players didn't make any kind of progress. Two NIP players were, were occupied battling out on Cat. That's somewhere where you make progress onto the bomb site. You eliminate that one player and you have them confined to one spot, but retake very uncoordinated and they're punished for it. It's a dangerous, dangerous NIP at the moment. Confident, full utility, a lot of money to work with, I can imagine. They're not going to be you know, sour about that one. They've got probably the double horse back out to play. We've been seeing how well Forrest and Allo have been making those work. And on the other side of things, Cloud9, that money is absolutely dire. I think we're almost back underway. We are indeed. And well, looking at Cloud9, it's pistols, a couple of nades. Last time they picked up a kill on long with that, but not even going to find that this time. This isn't looking good. Yeah, they weren't able to stabilize it at any point during like the second, the second stage of this half. So basically, every round has been they win one and then they lose, or they win one and then they have to save to get that off back. They had to get that full kit, so their money has never been in a good spot on this defensive side. And that's given Nip all they've needed to work with. Well, Cloud9 are going to have to dig deep for this round or even making an impact in towards it. They have so little 
in their arsenal. Sean Garris, the man who did brilliantly before, I think it was with the 5-7, if I'm not mistaken, when they made their way towards that B site earlier in this, but not going to have the opportunity this time as Forrest just skips, hops, and jumps up towards Sean. And look at this Cloud9 just tucking away, trying to make them come into those closer angles, try and put those pistols to work. Yeah, and Forrest just biding his time, waiting for someone to peek. He sees it, he gets dinked. He actually gets eliminated by Freakazoid long range. That's the op down. Cloud9 could get aggressive and try and pick that one up, but it's NIP. They're just going to stream out. So they're not falling back off this. They're going to come take these battles against the pistol. Exist is going to get one. But there's still three players here. Skadoodle, Shroud, and Nothing. They're all here. And look, Nothing hasn't even been touched yet by that Molly, but Exist still checks. That's vital. He's going to take him down. And this pistol round is being swept aside, and Sean Garris can do nothing in this. Looked a little promising with, with Freak just it was picking almost forward something like that. For a second. Yeah, but unfortunately, NIP too much to go against. They salvaged the AWP onto Freiburg. So yeah, you're right. This this double op setup did great in the first half for NIP. It's done wonders in the second half for him. They've won. I mean, there's only been two gun rounds won by Cloud9 in this half. So that's very very impressive. Yeah, and this will be NIP getting themselves onto match point. 15 to 14 here. Cloud9 took. The last round with a pinch of salt, but this is the one they have to make count here. It's do or die, or we're going to overtime, and we'll have to see how that one pans out, because that's a little different, but... Oh, I see something being switched out there towards Get Right. Let's see what he can do with this one. Oh, my word. All right, we've got something going on. This could be a lot of pain through those doors if they go marching through. Get Right's going to have bullets for days, but no one actually going to get tagged up from this, and they're going to be able to switch back out to their regular guns. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, this is... I mean, that's, that's astounding that they cross. Only one player crossed. Once they heard the auto snipers, everyone just chilled out for a second. Didn't even, they were just too scared. Them, yep. right? No, they're just like, we're not dealing with it. We'll wait. Okay, now Cloud9 can reset a little. They can maybe get back to where they wanted to play. It's interesting because all the success that, or a lot of the success that NIP's had in, this, in, their, in their T side is going up Catwalk, which is right at Skadoodle, which is basically what Cloud9 wants. They want you going at Skadoodle, their star opera, who's just been a beast for so long, but NIP is able to bully their way in, in some cases, just being gifted the bomb site. Well, that's a little bit of a different start, though. Sean Garris will manage to find Get Right in those B tunnels, so going to keep some sort of control towards this map, but we know that Get Right's been going out on his own here, and this play two towards mid is going to be dangerous as hell. Look at this Freakazoid on the precipice, doing so much damage. Forrest is just beyond that smoke. If only he knew Forrest. He's going to start edging forward, and he's going to make for a run for a Freakazoid. Finally catches a glimpse, he turns around. Oh my god, he doesn't get the shot! Freakazoid, what is going on here? And now two players, the Guardians of B, are going to have to step up. It's Sean Garris, it's nothing. The crossfire's paying off perfectly. Nothing comes up finally with the goods. As Forrest, last man alive, 1v4. He's going to take down one. Sean Garris gone. He gets a second. That's Skadoodle. And now 1v2. This can't happen, and it won't. Shroud closes down. It's 15-15. We're going to overtime. And my word, that was scary for a last round. Freakazoid is so happy right now that his team bailed him out of that one. But that crossfire and that B bomb site, even though they take care of one, that, that crossfire was just too strong in that B site. No yeah. NIP members coming from the tunnel, so there was nothing to distract the players on platform. You know, Sean pushed up in that corner to the left. Really well done on that defense, just holding strong inside the bomb site. But you know, I mean, we're seeing a lot of NIP. We've seen Get Right do it once. We just saw Ford do it there. Just nonchalantly walk out mid, you know, not feeling like there's ever going to be a presence there. It's only usually going to be Freakazoid in CT spawn. So right. I'm actually impressed that NIP was able to win out that half and force overtime without even really exploiting mid too much. It, it makes you worry for overtime almost, doesn't it? You're going to have to see what they can bring here because we are going to go back live into this one. They're not messing around. They want to get this one started, get that momentum going and building back up once again. And Cloud9 starting out on the CT side, NIP on the T side. What are we seeing stuff to start with here? And it looks like Skadoodle's going to go a little bit more aggressive. He's going to find the start. That's Freiburg down. That chicken wing sticking out just a little bit much, and he picks off the elbow of Freiburg. Perfect beginning. Exactly what they'd need. Skadoodle was consistently challenged down by Shaw, as you mentioned. If he can get that building up for him early on, not a bad way to begin, but still, NIP have time. Well, now they have three players in the middle. This is a perfect opportunity for them to just stroll out right now. They know they're not going to get too much. But just like we saw during regulation, Get Right's going to work his way up Cat. Exist is going to fall back towards Long with the bomb. He's going to meet up with Forrest. Looks like they're gearing up for some kind of a split at the moment. I wonder if they commit to this. They've got 56 seconds to do so. You've got Shroud waiting in pits. Skadoodle on towards the site. Freak's kind of pulled himself back from it a touch, but not too much. So he's still got presence there if needed. But 
MIP going to be, once again, building back up towards short. They've got three players there. Forrest just waiting around in mid. But they could be tucking down towards CT. They've already dropped down towards ramp. Gerard's going to find Freakazoid. That's the mid presence gone. Gerard comes in towards Skadoodle. That is perfect play coming out from him. That's his third. That's the dangerous Gerard you occasionally see rearing its head. And now he's looking for more. And why not? There's Shroud and Sean Garris waiting, but he's not going to have the chance here. Bring it back to a 2v2. This is still possible. Shroud in a great little spot here. He's got one towards the side. Sean Garris is going to find Forrest, and now it's all down towards Exist. 1v2, he's going to have to step up for his team, and he's not going to be able to do it. Sean Garris comes in with a retake. What a round to win for Cloud9. Two on four in that retake, so they find the kills they need. No trades coming out for NIP. They're just able to pick them off one by one. They get that defuse, and that's crucial. But once again, a lot of success for NIP coming up. Catwalk, Sh Skadoodle not able to find anything that round. He spends a lot of time pot flashing long for his teammate to try and bail him out if they're coming out long. No one's there, and GetRight's able to drop and gets all the kills that NIP needed, unfortunately. They just muffed the uh, retake a little bit. Yep. Just fluffed the lines at the end. 16-15 now, Cloud9 taking the reins in overtime to at least begin with. But already Alu looking like he wants to speed things up here. Look at this guy, he's straight away going off and exists, running the orb towards Shroud. Okay, that's a little different, but why not? I guess if you have the spawn, use it. But there we go, that's what we need to see. The impact from Skadoodle coming in, denying that early short presence, but already great information gathered. As you just noted, they're pushing through those B-tunnels. They know they're not here. Yeah, all the intel in the world, and this flank can actually speed up a little bit and they can catch a couple off. They're spending time boosting up on Catwalk, trying to peer over the smoke into the A site. Not going to be able to find anything, but Cloud9, with this flight coming in, so spread out at the moment. One player at long, one player in Goose at the A bomb site. That's going to be one on X situations unless Skadoodle has the guts to look away from long to bail Freakazoid out, but that information might just come too late. He's going to do it. He's making the turn. He's going to try and negate long. It doesn't matter. Gerard's going to land the shot. Now Freakzoid has to be the stopping post. He has to make this play stop where it is, but no, Gerard will break through in the end. It's a one kind of trade coming off there, but it's going to allow a little bit of time. But the bomb's down. Two players in this from the CT side. Nothing in Sean Garris, this time having no luck. Gerard's still alive. He's not going to allow this one to happen. Nothing, not going to get it. And Gerard just taking matters into his own hands there. Four kills for him. Yeah, once again, I think Skadoodle just swings out a little bit too wide, gets picked off, misses that shot, but NIP just repeatedly bullying their way out Catwalk, finding the first, the, the first couple kills that they need. Too much for Freakazoid to do in that kind of a position. Okay, we're seeing the double orb come out Triple. for uh, Cloud9 as well. Something we don't see all that often. Sean Garris kind of picking it up normally if Skadoodle's already been taken down. And he's already tagged up to, or tagged down to 19, should I say. As this has started off well for NIP. Yeah, they picked up those three ops much like they did in regulation. They didn't get the autos, but they pick up three ops, and one of them does the work, takes him down. So his only real play, he's going to actually position himself at the back of Plaid, where it's just a headshot angle. So that's a smart play from him. But there's the duel. Alu takes out Skadoodle. That's a big loss for Cloud9. Massive loss, considering Gerard's been doing that on his own, but add in others, keep them alive. You've got a bit of a recipe for disaster for Cloud9 if they don't lock this down by the site, but still. Forest keeping two players busy towards B, and now look at this play towards A. Three players here, Exist, Freiburg, Alu, and it's Freakzoid to go down to Exist, gonna crack that one open, they're gonna know Shroud is still here. He's been positioned on long consistently throughout this game. He's gonna get the tag towards one, but I don't think he get much more. Yeah, and he's, he has to take these duels now. He's gotta win a little bit more. There's Get Right lurking, perfect timing from him. And now it's looking dire once again, two on four, but that makes it a four on one Forest. Finding one through the doors, and I'm glad you mentioned that Shroud has been playing long this entire half because they really haven't put any pressure on him. One or two rounds they've gone at him, but mostly it's just everyone coming up catwalk. And that round, crucially, Get Right switches it up, finds that lurk out long, and just throws Shroud. He wasn't used to seeing Get Right lurk like that, so it catches him off guard in the last round of overtime, or the first half of overtime. Yeah, so. Looking at the scoreline here, and when we saw how good NIP were on that CT side throughout the game. They were really picking up the gun rounds. They're going straight in towards this. Gerai dropping 36 kills already. He's having a monstrous game. And we said at the start, he looked confident. He looked like he was playing that DM puggy style. It's working out for him. Yeah, and Forrest as well. I and mean, this, this is the NIP we used to see where, where Gerai and Forrest were top fragging for their squad. Yep. Both playing well, but Gerai just at a level of his own in the server right now with those 36 kills. Worrying times if you're a Cloud9 fan here. Let's see what NIP have going on on their CT side. They're going to be jumping over towards that one. Cloud9 need to get back into this. They need to find a little bit of that spark they were running with earlier. Freaks over that great play towards opening up the sites, but that became a little quiet. But here we go. We are back into this. And already we're going to see a very decisive beginning. Forrest is going to get fed the first. That's nothing down. And presence is certainly known. Already exists, though. Going to be flooded with those flashes. He's going to have to keep his eyes trained towards this. He's got a good idea where they are. Sean Garris, though, breaking through towards A. That's going to change things up a little bit here. But Alu and Exist looking to retake control on long. That's where the bomb is. Skadoodle's still got the bomb. He's going to try and get out of there, as Alu did find Freak. 
Yeah, one's flanking. Drop oh down. Oh my god, that's it's Garay. Right. Yep, he's lurking and he's gonna get another kill. That's the bomb. That could be the entire round going the way of NIP because you see the two players, Alu and Exist, who are playing long. They push out. They're gonna meet up with them. Shroud's got so much work to do. There's a minute left, so they can play it a little slow and find the battles they want. But this is gonna be so difficult. And it was all going so well for those two players splitting up short, but now it's the worst situation they could be in. You can see it already, those bullets starting to fly. The molly comes up. Sean Garris does take down Get Right, so maybe a little bit of a ray of light at the end of the tunnel, but already in those beat times, you can see him lurking. It's Alu with the double coming in, and NIP looking good in this now. Match point here, 18 to 16. They need one more, and Cloud9's hopes are going to get a little shattered off this one. Yeah, they're dimming quickly, and this time they don't have an AWP on, or they are going to. Drop one for Skadoodle, it looks like. It looks like he dropped an AK-47 over to a teammate. He does pick that up. He's got the spawn over towards Long. But this is... They're going to have to slow play this. And, and actually, interestingly enough, the first round of overtime, NIP did not go back to that double op setup. They waited until they won one. All right. Here we go. Forest being cautious. Ooh, Skadoodle maybe looking for a little boost up there by Cap. Forrest is kind of playing a little bit of an off angle, playing a little bit more passive on it, but Gerrit's already made his presence known. He just pushed up long. This guy in such an important round, and Alu's gonna find Skadoodle, Freakazoid and nothing, the last two alive, and NIP are looking so strong in overtime right now. Nothing so close here, just steps away from Alu. Alu's gonna back out of it, Forrest's gonna back away. One minute remains. Shot comes through those double doors. Nothing down to 12 HP here. Freakazoid's trying to speed things up, but there's Exist catching nothing in the heels. And now it's just Freakazoid 1v4. On paper, this should never have happened this way, but NIP finding a little bit of what makes them incredible here as Freakazoid will at least find Forest. But now three players in his way. Alu, Exist, and Freiburg. Peek comes out from short, and he does tag up Alu perfectly. He's not going down without a fight here. 30 seconds, he's got the bomb, he's taken down Alu. Now he's got to find one more, but it doesn't look good. And there we have it, final kill coming through for Freiburg. And my god, that was a great little bit of play from NIP. And we said it was a danger for Cloud9 on this map. It should have been their game on paper, but there's that magic if you wanted to see it. Well, it's it's the hard carry out of Get Right. What an oh, unbelievable yeah. performance from him. Being aggressive at all times, pushing up, finding his spots to flank. He does so much damage. And not only that, but it opens up opportunities for his team. He gets kills, he alleviates pressure on other sides of the map, other points on the map, and that, I mean, you saw even Forrest able to step up with a heavy op performance. Just, you know, once those rotations come in, and Forrest and Alu able to pick them off, all based off the work they get right put in. Yeah, and when, when everything starts falling in the right place for NIP, in that sort of instance, everyone knows how dangerous they are. It's never been a question of, could they ever do this? Are they a, you know, a team that could achieve it? When those individual players start you know, firing on all cylinders, everyone knows that NIP style can be so deadly, so hard to play to. But let's kind of flip the switch towards Cloud9. There was always a threat here, there was always a danger, and I think they just found out exactly what you were talking about earlier on. Well, it was just it was just surprising, yeah. It does too at times. It was the map that they, you know, they looked good on during that streak, but lately in tournaments, it's a little bit weaker for them. And it's just very interesting that NIP going at their strong point of the defense, going at Skadoodle, oftentimes they win that. They come out on top. Yeah. Well, it's not the end of the road for Cloud9. They still have a possible best of three to be playing very soon. Not an easy, easy opponent, though. No. But it's certainly not the end of the road for them. We're going to have to see if they can dig deep a little later on, repair whatever went wrong in that previous game. But for NIP, it's all things going right for now. So, as uh, has been uh, highlighted, is that NIP, Lauren said it time and time again, were looking a little kind of uh, worrisome coming into this one. We, you said it yourselves, both of you yeah. agreed that this was looking good for Cloud9. Coming into this though with an, an overtime and the victory, Ninjas in Pajamas acquiring victory. We are saying goodbye though to Cloud9 as that's going to be curtains for them. The North Americans are going to have some time to look around Dubai and watch the tournament as well as of course say hello to all the supportive fans who they have here in Dubai. Let's break down that somewhat though, boys. Halvor and Anders are back with me and we're going to talk a little bit more about what we uh, saw transpire there. Did you ever see an overtime coming through this and at what point did that, that become kind of realistic? Well, I, th I think an overtime was just always a possibility, especially when you saw how close they got out to, well, initially. Like, it was a tightly contested game. It was, you know, I think it was 5-5 at one point. So, you know, they were going neck and neck at times. I, I thought Cloud9 would be able to, to close it out when they managed to break NIP uh, after uh, that second mm. pistol. So, um, 
That for me was gold, uh, Cloud9. It's a golden opportunity to actually close it out. But then you have a vintage get right performance. Just absolutely insanity. Uh, you know, not to leave Forrest out either. He played amazing as well. But get right, that game was just, he, he simply won the game for NAP. Yeah, has it been a while since we saw that, Anders? Way, way, way too long since we've seen something like that. And I think most critically of all is when, when we've seen it in the past, if we've seen it in the past year at all, then it's been like a couple of rounds where you think, oh wait, there's a little bit of taste of that get right, and then it's gone again. And especially as soon as a team like Cloud9, they'd break them on, imp on important rounds, that's when it seemed like the whole IP team usually would crumble. But this time, they just kept coming back again and again. And um, yeah, that's very rare nowadays. But um, I mean, if you've been watching Global Offensive since the, the sort of inception of it and that whole 87 and zero record that everyone keeps going on about, um, this is the sort of stuff that we were always looking for. You actually, every match, no matter how far behind it were, you always thought, well, there's always a chance that Get Right or Forest is going to, or both are going to turn up, and then everything changes. Uh, it just doesn't really happen anymore. But this time it did, and um, I don't know. I don't know why that is. It's hard to really explain, but it's quite impressive when you see it. It's not something you see every day. It is most definitely a fair summation. Uh, of that one. Still, we're going to be seeing more from NIP as they do progress through the bracket, and we're going to be having to see that thing, that, that unfold successfully for them. We doubted them at, at the desk. I think yeah. it, uh, the statistics certainly pointed towards a victory for the Americans, but we had a very, very loud get right uh, over on the stage who was making his presence known both in and out of game. Um, I think one point that needs to be made is towards uh, Freakazoid's point you, uh, we were talking about over there. I was talking to uh, a couple of the players and they were saying he plays the same spot every time on CT. He, basically, his role is to defend mid on CT. We see, yeah. we see that time and time again. However, he's always playing towards CT spawn and, and can players fall into a kind of uh, a comfort with some of these def defensive positions where they can kind of find themselves running out of ideas and going to the same spot every single time because it most definitely was clear watching yeah, it. Oh yeah, just absolutely. It. There's a reason why you have certain spots just named after players. Yeah. Right. Because, because you find them there pretty much every single, uh, every single round. Uh, and yeah, that's definitely a danger that you can run into by the fact that you don't really feel the need to have any sort of backup plan with what you're doing because it's been working so nicely for you for a stretch. Uh, I don't think that's what lost Cloud9 in the game by any means. But no, it's definitely... Uh, and a disadvantage. And you could tell that, you know, NIP are going to work around that, knowing mm -hmm. that Fixer plays that position a lot, and they're going to know how to handle it. They're going to be more prepared. Yeah, I mean, you kind of, you touched on what NIP did right, which was, of course, get right just playing his mind, out of his mind. On the side of Cloud9, were there underperformances, or was that just kind of Cloud9 giving it their best shot? So, I mean, in my opinion, um, what we saw was at, at a large stretches of the game, we had Sean Gares at the top of the scoreboard, yeah. and that's not really supposed to happen. That's an indication that something is not working out. It's not because Sean is like not good enough, but his role is supposed to be doing, calling the strats and all that stuff, and everyone else is supposed to be stepping up. Uh, you just need Sean to sort of tag along and 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 do sort of decently well, but but not like a carry performance. And it was he was ended up I think uh, being tied for score with was it nothing at some point or was it Shroud? I can't remember. Um, either way, um, he's not supposed to be that high up, really. So, um, so that's a, that is definitely a sign that something wasn't working quite yeah. on, on Cloud9. Yeah. If anything, if he has that kind of a performance, that should mean that Cloud9 are winning pretty handedly. Yeah. And again, nothing against Sean, obviously, but it's like Andrew said, he's not, I guess, the chosen one from, from Cloud9 who's supposed to do that type of thing. No. So, uh, yeah, for me, I was kind of uh, disappointed with how Cloud9 defended their catwalk. On their CT side, I definitely expected to see, not that Skidul played extremely poorly or anything like that, but I would have expected to see more out of him with how many opportunities he was given to shut NIP down. Because that's something NIP have been running for such a long time, and it's kind of their go-to move, that and the B split, to the point where teams, again, it's you know falling into that comfort zone. Teams should be very aware yeah. of this. Breaking through that barrier that can be that comfortable hold on CT, especially. Um, that does kind of wrap it up. I feel like there's not too much more that can be said, whereas a case of just Cloud9 coming towards the point where they were playing what they could, Get Right was the one who kind of was the catalyst towards NIP victory. Uh, any closing points on that game, Anders? Or do you think we've kind of we've covered the bases? Uh, just that it's, I mean, it's super exciting. I. Um... I, I hope that they can they can keep up with this NIP. I hope they're going to sh keep showing this level of of, of consistency and, and just like throughout a whole game, playing really well. It's been so frustrating watching NIP play like pretty much 
this whole year um, just because they've been looking so timid. They look scared when they play. And you can't even, it feels mm. even weird saying that, like Forrest and Get Right and Freiburg, and why should they feel scared of playing anybody? Um, but that's the way they've been looking. They don't right now. If they can somehow hold on to that, then it's, it's going to be different. Yeah, I mean, talking to Natu, of course, who has now been removed from the coaching role, uh, he was saying that it's, a, it's night and day between the NIP in practice, the NIP just hanging out at home, yeah. and the NIP you see on stage. And I think that's been the case for quite some time now. Whether or not they can kind of find that comfort now, of course, without, without the coach presence there as well, could well, be something special. I mean, in Cologne, they faced Virtus Pro, didn't they, in the playoffs, NIP. And I'm pretty sure they had like a, a really close first game, and then Virtus Pro just kind of crushed them yeah. later on. That close first game versus Virtus Pro, actually, NIP showed like similar qualities as they did here. Like they did, did seem like they were trying to play with confidence, like taking some crazy battles, but sort of making it work. And once they lost that game, it just all evaporated. Like it was clear they were stripped of confidence. They had nothing left. So you know, maybe a win today is going to help them out. But I still feel like they're an extremely fragile team, and mm -hmm. and maybe it works against Cloud9 if you play Fnatic or Envious, they will destroy them. And that so they, they needs to be just like not just a thin layer of confidence, but a lot of it. So a lot more confidence needed to see NIP get any further. But talking of further, let's see what we're going to be going up against next. TSM Fnatic will be our next game, which is going to be quite the belter. <laughs> I think that's safe to say. It's always a, a kind of saga, a series, when we get to enjoy those two teams going head to head. So that's going to be the next one, guys. And I'd love to know, we're going to do the toe in the water thing. I quite like that last time, yeah. where we just had a little, a little skim, a little preview of what we are, you guys are expecting to see. So starting with the Dane. Uh, TSM Fnatic, how are you seeing this one play out? Because this is just, this is Clash of the Titans, it always is, and it's always a matchup that you can't, I'm not talking for predictions, but I mean, this is a matchup that surely we can expect at the full 30 rounds. Yeah, I, I definitely hope so. It's such a, such a fun matchup, isn't it? So much history behind it, and every tournament yeah. we add just a little bit more to it, it seems. Um, you're right, yeah, I have to side with my, my Danish brother, and <laughs> okay. I? I have, I've got to do it, I've got to do it. I think they're narrowly going to beat Fnatic this time around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kerrigan's going to come after you with the spoon. Yeah, exactly, yeah. or things much worse. What goes on backstage is <laughs> just awful. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. for me, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to side with Fnatic. Ooh, it, okay. It's the easy choice, I guess. But, A split desk, you I know, like that. Yeah, you know, going with the, the major winner, it's not the most risky <laughs> thing I've ever done, but no, Fnatic right now, they seem to do no wrong, really. So uh, expecting them to do well. They also had a really good showing versus TSM in that Frag Bite Challenge very yeah, recently. Did. So I think they have the better map pool overall. And being able to narrow it down to one map, I think Fnatic are going to come the better out of it. Either way, this is going to be a spectacle to behold. TSM versus Fnatic is going to be kicking off after this break. So stay tuned and be ready for a whole lot of Counter-Strike. <laughs> 